Hello everyone, I'm Forrest McFree Lava, and this is Speed Pipe Apple States number two. We left off with a thriving colonial empire spanning basically mostly just in Africa. In fact, it's entirely just in Africa right now, except we are at war with Johor, who we're not actually taking any hostile actions against at the moment. Our plan, as it's been in the last episode, is to use Johor and our inaction against them in order to really just anger our population. They will get so upset that we're in a war that we're not doing anything about that we will hopefully be able to use their anger in order to pass much needed healthcare reform and also school reforms. If we're able to do that successfully, we will uh, get population growth that will outstrip that of our neighbors and from there essentially hopefully be able to become a great power and then dominate the Italian area. We have to do that fairly quickly as we run the risk of Sardinia Piedmont forming Italy around us and then invading us and conquering us in turn. So as long as we're able to do this relatively quickly, we have a pretty open and great future ahead of us. <clears throat> if, however, we are too slow, then we could face a lot of rather negative things heading forward. We're currently building an artillery brigade, so we'll be up to three full groups of more or less decent armies. They're really only going to be good against colonial forces, as they're just too small to do anything against European armies. You'll see there's a 30 stack from two Sicilies just right next to us. Forces like that are just going to devastate us in actual combat, so we're not going to fight them. We could maybe in a few years hope to form an entire 30 stack, but that is just not something we're going to be able to do right now, and it isn't really something that we should prioritize. We do, however, have a decent amount of prestige, our industry is coming together, and we do have at least a somewhat respectable army, maybe nothing that is going to intimidate anyone other than maybe Luca or Modenia, and even those are under the protection of Austria, which luckily is controlling Bavaria, so we don't really have to worry about the North Germans forming Germany and attacking our one ally, France, at least not in the near future. We did manage to get market structure, which is nice. We're just raking in the money now. We really should find something else to start investing in. Empiricism doesn't come for another 10 years. We're probably going to want to go down the route of basically just up to machine guns, as we will eventually want to get a colony and a large colonial presence in the New World, so we do have to work towards that. Maybe something such as positivism will be more helpful right now to just get our population's literacy up. We can start doing that. Ideological thought won't really help us, as we have two uh, national focuses as the minimum, However, since we don't yet even have, um, <clears throat> since we don't have enough people, we would have to have over one million to get our second national focus, we're limited to one. So really the most important thing is to get our population up, and we'll go ahead and start positivism to just get our literacy high enough that uh, hopefully that will become the next issue. Really population is the most important thing. We're also going to keep expanding our nice winery, as that's pretty much the main thing we've got right now. We are also making quite a lot of fruit, grain, and wool. Well, that's basically something that a winery and a liquor distillery will take care of. Our liquor distillery not really doing all that much, which is a bit of a shame, but not really anything we should be concerned with. And ultimately, our population isn't so very upset. I think we could actually go ahead and lower our military maintenance just a bit. We'll lower them to 50%, that should hopefully make it so they won't just get stack wiped by rebels, although it's probably not the best place for them to be at. The most important, more or less mid to long term goal we have is to just increase our naval bases. That's going to be one of the technologies we get as soon as it's 1855, we're going to focus on our naval base tech. And we also have to get a few tertiary techs. We have to get up to machine guns. Uh, Breech-loaded rifles is very important. We're going to go ahead and not support pacifism. 
Okay, so let's see. Machine guns are basically the most uh, basic thing that we need to get. Unfortunately, our liberals keep winning the elections, as most of our people actually like them quite a bit. We, however, managed to just go quickly back to reactionaries. It, it really doesn't matter what our populace or what our populace really wants, uh, as far as government is concerned, as they're all more or less equal, and we really want them to be upset, so we can just keep switching the government, and it doesn't really matter too much in the long run. Our goal is mainly to just get enough prestige, industry, and military scores that we will basically be able to become a great power. We're also going to go ahead and just create another group of three transports. That way, we will have transports for each of our armies. Three groups of three spread with three over here in Africa, and the remaining six will just be more or less at Rome or follow the armies that they're based with around. This will give us essentially the most uh, the most power projection possible, not that we'll really need it, as we are pretty much limited to our own domestic area for right now. We will eventually go ahead and attack Johor, but that's still going to be quite a while. Now, taking a quick look, we could go ahead and get business regulations, which would help. Steam turbines are available now. There's really quite a few things we can go ahead and get. We'll go ahead and get Impressionism first off as we do need to get our prestige gain higher. Sardinia Piedmont is 15th, Two Sicilies is 12th. Those are the only real competition we'll have to face, Two Sicilies being the main one, as they are only slightly behind us and their military score is much, much above ours. So that is a bit of a concern. We do have enough money now that we can begin upgrading our naval base. And hopefully we'll just get all of these naval bases upgraded by 1855. That's basically definitively going to happen. And we're finally getting our first peace offers. We're of course going to turn them down, upsetting our population, and hopefully inching us slightly closer towards passing healthcare reform. So this is a bit worrying. Our people are getting rather upset at us. We can go ahead and look at what sort of movements we could possibly face. It looks as though there is quite a bit of a voters' rights movement. We could just suppress them now. We don't have very many, uh, very many suppression points. We'll go ahead and just become very in favor of jingoism. Everybody loves jingoism. We'll go ahead and suppress the voters' rights movement. And just like that, we're up to 34% of the upper house. We'll just keep turning down Johor's offers. And really, we should probably get ready to start uh, funding our military all the way. The longer we wait before we do that, the basically the more bases we're going to be able to upgrade. Only bases in, uh, I believe, our home continent count directly towards our colonial power. However, bases outside of our continent will still, uh, okay, bases outside of our home continent will still uh, improve the total number of ships we'll be able to support. So the more, and okay, we're immediately able to pass our next healthcare reform, which is great. We may want to start getting our army ready, but I'm going to wait right now. As I was saying, the more bases we get, the larger navy we'll be able to support, and some ship types do give colonial power as well. So it's really going to be a thing of just balancing out what we work on right now to try to get the best thing possible for ourselves in the future. Upgrading our winery is going to keep our people employed. It looks like we might actually want to build another factory in the near future. I would build a coal plant, however or not a coal plant, a glass factory, however we have no coal, which is a bit of an issue. We're going to have to just immediately upgrade this one as it looks like our as our uh, craftsman growth rate is actually rather quick. And I'm a bit worried that we're going to start getting unemployed. Now that isn't going to be the end of the world, however it's just not a necessarily great thing to have. 
In fact, we may just build the glass factory as it will feed into this. It's just maybe not the best thing to do. I'll see if there's any coal in the Empire right now. As we do have quite a few overseas holdings, although I can't really imagine that we have very much. And in fact, it does look like there are no coal producing areas in our country. We will be able to just buy it off the world market. That is also affected by prestige. The higher our prestige is, the basically higher on the play. Basically, there's a list of countries that demand goods. The higher your prestige is, the higher you are on that list. We're also going to start basically funding our military now. As we're really at that point, we've passed a few reforms. We're going to want to pass the rest, and we're also worried now about our people rising up to try to overthrow the government. So we'll go ahead and start building a few new military divisions, just everything that we can throw together. We may even want to mobilize, although that is a rather expensive thing to do. So it's probably going to be for the best to just not raise our forces right now. We did suppress the voters' rights movement. However, there is a suffrage movement that's rather upset at us right now. I don't really think it's anything we have to worry about too much. These red shirts, though, are potentially a very real problem. We got a potato blight, which is unfortunate, though nothing too concerning. And at this point, I'm going to load up one of our navies and start sailing over to Suez. We will meet up with this force down south in Africa. It looks as though we're having a bit of a naval supply issue. We'll keep turning down offers from Johor. We are now completely done with healthcare. We just need to pass three school system reforms. Those will take a bit of a toll on our budget. However, much more importantly than that, when we have all the school reforms set up, we will be able to get quicker uh, advances to our pop literacy. And that's going to be very important to just stay ahead technologically. We're going to go ahead and ship these navies down back to East Africa, and in the near future we will start to move over to attack Johor. I'll see if we can get access from any of our uh, basically great powers nearby, although it doesn't look as though anyone is really... Actually, the British have accepted, which is great news. We can in fact go ahead and park our army right outside of Johor. It won't build up our war score, which is in part kind of a good thing, as we don't want to do that just yet. We'll start getting mu muzzle loading rifles, as that will help us eventually get colonial power, and if they do have a significant military force, we'll be able to just defeat them. They have three brigades. I would kind of like to go at them with superiority in numbers. Although, it is a bit concerning that we might have to fight rebels at home. Our pop militancy is incredibly high at the moment. So we'll go ahead and just send these guys back. We are able to get basic school systems. We need only one year now. We can pass reforms every six months. One more year of this high militancy, and we will be able to just pass all the reforms needed and make peace with Shahor. We'll just double check right now. And there is no real issue with them allying a great power. Uh, great Britain is a little close, so that is concerning. We do, however, have a model colony, which is fantastic news. It gives us a lot of prestige, research points, and sadly, it lowers our militancy. We're not really aiming for that. Although, that does boost us quite a bit. We're still rank 11, though. So it, may be not, so it is maybe not the greatest thing, but it is still nice. We are the, ele the ninth ranked by prestige. We'll just keep building that up. And in fact, we're going to make the slightly risky decision of shipping over another one of our small armies. We don't really have the ability to keep our navy funded at the moment, which is quite worrying. We might actually be in someone's sphere of influence right now. We're actually not. So that's interesting and uh, definitely not a great thing. 
However, we just need our navies to survive long enough to go ahead and attack Jahor directly. So in just one moment, we'll go ahead, pause the game for a second. I accidentally unpaused it immediately. It doesn't matter too very much. We'll go ahead and drop these men back off. And we're getting all sorts of events increasing our prestige. So there we go. The highlight of Rome as the capital of an empire. That's quite nice. Maybe quite a bold claim, but I'll, I'll accept it. And we'll go ahead and just keep moving these forces over. Our navy is taking quite a few casualties, but it's not that big of an issue at the moment. And we'll go ahead and decline that last peace deal. We have six months. We won't actually attack them unless we absolutely need to, and that would just be if the British are getting their relations up to a worryingly high degree. I don't really foresee that happening. We go ahead and get breech-loaded rifles. If they get to... well, that's kind of the thing. We're really playing with fire right now by, by not attacking. They are going rather slowly. Let's go ahead and just double check. We'll be able to pass reforms in October. The British are getting kind of close. We are fighting red shirts now. That is not great. Thankfully, we just managed to get this uh, major discovery. I'm going to just go ahead and mobilize our army right now. We'll go ahead and turn off uh, having them all meet up. We'll ship this other 3,000 man group back to the capital. We really cannot afford to risk as much as we're risking. I'm going to go ahead and begin sieging out Jahor. Worst case, we will be forced to make a status quo peace deal. We go ahead and turn down their offer right now. Now these red shirts are a tremendous risk. If we're getting them, other places in Italy might be getting them as well in the near future. And if that happens before we're a great power, we really do run the risk of losing control and basically having to deal with an AI Italy that will not want anything to do with us other than annex us. We have good school systems. We are exactly where we need to be. We'll go ahead and just move our forces to Malacca. And it looks as though we'll just be able to come from both angles and just destroy their army, then siege out the remaining provinces, and we will be in a fairly decent spot from that point there on. We'll move our navy over to help uh, increase the rate at which we occupy the provinces. It works in EU4, I'm not sure if that's actually a thing in this game. France broke their alliance with us, which is a little bit more worrying. We'll go ahead and demobilize our forces. The next reform that we pass is going to be one that our population actually does want. So as soon as that happens, we won't really have to worry about legitimacy. We'll keep declining their peace deals. We don't really need the uh, militancy anymore. However, with this done, we are now ready to accept their peace, annex them, and the next reforms we pass will be ones our people like. We'll go ahead and park our navy. And there we go. We'll go ahead and not support any of those crazy political ideologies and build up our naval base. We'll start shipping forces back over to places they'll be more useful. And ideally we won't have to fight very many wars in the near future. The next really important thing we're going to want to do is just start colonizing into Africa, which means building up our naval presence. And to an extent, also, we're going to want to calm down with our colonial expansion, as all that does is tie up colonial power that we could be using for free, infamous or infamy-free lands all throughout Africa. We'll go ahead and see what our people want the most. It looks as though it's just wealth-based voting and not by that much. We could give some unemployment subsidies just to make sure that our people don't end up dying because of our incredibly high tax rates. So we'll go ahead and do that. We'll just pass that one, one last social reform just because we're able to. 
and from there are people still getting a bit upset hopefully it won't be too big of an issue we do have a lot of war exhaustion that's kinda just to be expected and since our liberal party does still support interventionism we may actually just go ahead and leave them in charge. We don't lose any taxes, and we also don't upset our population for splitting their, uh, for taking off the political party they won. We are kind of losing money though, so we will increase our tariffs. That isn't great for industry, however, at this point, the biggest concern I have isn't really our industrial standing so much as just worrying about our people rebelling. So we're going to keep our army funded We'll keep getting breech-loaded rifles. And we are the ninth ranked country in the world. So if we do keep this up, we will hopefully become a great power in the none too distant future. From there, we're going to focus on getting two Sicilies and maybe Sardinia Piedmont into our sphere of influence. From there, we should be basically the people in charge of forming Italy. Now we'll go ahead and see what we need to do. We need to be a great power, and everything needs to be owned by us or in our sphere. So let's take a quick look diplomatically. Lombardia will probably be a sticking point. In fact, it will certainly be a sticking point. Now, there haven't been any real European wars at the moment. We'll also go ahead and give people some subsidies or uh, pensions making us a pretty decent uh, welfare state that'll also trickle back into our economy. The more money we give to the poor, the more we'll be able to tax from them, and they won't die, which will help our population growth. So really, all of that works quite great. We can now build guards, which is an interesting little advancement. And just like that, it is now 1855, we'll be able to get Raider Group Doctrine and get our naval bases upgraded once more. Now, we might not have enough money to actually upgrade them, and that's a very real concern. Ultimately, though, we'll just save up money and hope for the best. We could increase our tariffs a bit, which is really great for our uh, income, probably not great at all for our population. It doesn't look as though we're doing too much damage to our middle class. There are a few of them who aren't getting any of their life needs met. We could potentially lower our taxes on them. I'm not actually going to do that, though. We'll, we'll just let them, let them deal with the tax burden for now. I don't imagine it'll be too terrible in the long run. And with all that taken care of, it's really going to be just a matter of waiting for prestige. We can go ahead and give people wealth-based voting. That calmed them down quite a bit. They are still upset. We'll send a papal expedition, and now we will actually become a great power in roughly a year. So that is fantastic news. And once we do become a great power, it's just a few short ventures away from having us be the premier Italian state and maybe even forming Italy. Now, I'm not going to be too completely hopeful for that happening, as there is still the chance that some other state will sneak it from us in the last moment. Although, I'm really, really feeling pretty good about this. We're in a pretty good spot, we've done everything more or less by the books. As soon as we get Raider Group Doctrine, we'll be able to upgrade these two naval bases and use any spare change from that to upgrade colonial naval bases. It looks as though it's actually going to be rather expensive, and that's really the thing with naval presence, is the higher the basically naval base level, the much more expensive it gets. It, it really just climbs dramatically. We'll take a quick look. Nothing too crazy. We have the model colony. A bunch of random wars throughout the world. We'll go ahead and give people harassment instead of just illegalizing political parties. The USA and Mexico fought, which is pretty typical, and way back to the Ottoman war against Egypt. And it looks as though we now actually border the Ottomans directly, so hopefully they don't decide they really want our land. 
With all that taken care of, though, our population is now no longer very upset just because of how, well, how many reforms we passed for them. We've kept their uh, beloved liberals in power. And just like that, it looks as though we'll be able to carry things forward more or less with, uh, with relative ease. The USA controls um, an interesting little bit of land, but also everything that they would usually own except Alaska. And it'll be interesting to see how their civil war plays out. It looks as though they have quite a few slave states. And that is rather interesting, though. At any rate, we'll go slide back over to here, take a look at the sphere of influences of various places. It looks as though Prussia, or uh, the North Germans, have managed to kick Austria out of South Germany. So we're likely to see a new uh, German state form in the near future. However, none of that matters. We're a great power. We'll go ahead and pass a reform if anyone really wants reform. And while our people are very liberal, they don't really seem to care that much. We'll go ahead and just pass more voting reform. And since we are a great power, let's go ahead and just focus all of our diplomatic efforts onto two Sicilies at first. And let's see, we'll focus slightly, not on Tuscany or anything, we'll just go straight for the major power. We'll try to get Sardinia, Piedmont, and two Sicilies into our camp. We'll probably want to get a technology in order to increase our diplomatic reputation, which we can get in just about a few days now, so that's actually very convenient. We can now upgrade our naval bases as well, we'll go ahead and do that. We have enough money for both of them, which is great. And let's take a look. Business regulations to increase our diplomatic influence and also our economy. There's really no reason not to pick that. And as our population continues to grow, we may even be able to create a crisis. Now, I haven't seen any crisis or uh, crises so far, which is a bit interesting, actually. You would think that there would be more of those. It looks as though everyone is doing very well at suppressing their uh, people, though. If we are able to get Lombardia into a crisis point, we will have everything that we need in order to basically turn on Austria, form Italy, and be in a very, very nice position. And yeah, that is uh, basically the plan at the moment. We are still going to get the technologies necessary to really colonize into the interior of Africa. And once we're really deeply entrenched in Africa, we will have the very nice uh, fringe benefit of having tons of African colonial troops that we'd be able to call on in order to just dominate all of our various neighbors. Now, weirdly enough, the United States is taking an active interest in two Sicilies. I kind of wish they would stay in their own part of the world. And hey, they're actually in the Civil War right now, with, weirdly enough, most of Texas joining them. And let's take a look at the relative strength of the two sides. 12 brigades for the CSA against 21 brigades of the USA. More likely than not, we're going to see the United States just dominate the southern states. And we're not really powerful enough to really convince them otherwise, so we're just not going to focus on that. And importantly, we can probably lower our military maintenance a decent amount. We'll keep it at 25% just so we don't completely run out. And we'll just keep our armies more or less where they're at right now. We'll increase our defense spending to 100%. That's just wages for our soldiers, so people will keep staying soldiers, and hopefully some will join. And we'll go ahead and increase the relations of the two states we're actually influencing, as well as further expanding our naval bases throughout the world. So, everything considered we are in a very nice spot. It is still a bit of a precarious spot. Things could turn against us at really any moment. I'll double check. We need to upgrade this factory in the near future and it looks as though we're finally getting people down here. 
We'll go ahead. We still have around 5,000 more people who can be hired there, so it's not too much of a worry right now. And we'll take a look at the great powers. Interestingly, the Ottoman Empire has still held on. And a very worrying thought would be if one of these other states becomes a great power, although it looks as though they're not really pressing for that at the moment. And once we get business regulations, we'll hopefully be in a much better spot. We are making just a tremendous amount of money, which is always nice. We could even press to market regulations. Although, if you give me just one moment, we're going to go ahead and see what exactly we need in order to colonize. We will probably need to get up to nationalism and imperialism in order to get manifest destiny. So in fact, we'll, we will start moving towards that. We can probably research one or two of those texts before we need to get the next uh, major philosophical advance. Now let's go ahead and just add two Sicilies to our sphere of influence. We'll now kind of lower that will go ahead and change to Tuscany primarily and it looks as though we've been banned from Sardinia Piedmont which is unfortunate but not exactly surprising so we'll start just getting a minor focus in all of these remaining states it may be better to just keep uh, just keep focusing primarily on a few states with no real focus on the others although we're going to start branching out Unfortunately, we did not meet success with our botanical expedition, so that's sad. Morocco wants to ally us. I guess we may as well. At any rate, though, with, Sardin er, with uh, two Sicilies in our camp, we are going forward quite well. The Russians, for whatever reason, seem to have stopped us from getting influence in Modenia, which is just completely random. We'll now have universal voting, so that will be nice. Just liberalizing the papal states. And yeah, <clears throat> at this point, we are moving forward quite well. We'll go ahead and switch our focus to Romagna, just so we don't get unemployed people. And we'll go ahead and spend some money to limit the advance of pandemic influenza. Now with that done, we'll continue to expand our naval bases. I didn't mean to build a land base just then, but I guess that happens. We're committed now. And once we can get up to about 18,000, we'll be able to build this naval base here. And it'll just further increase the amount of ships that we'll be able to get. So we may also want to increase our uh, naval tech for steamers and move down so we're able to build fancier ships that will give us ultimately much more uh, colonial power as that is really the next big thing we have about 12 11 or 12 years before that becomes a serious concern and we are starting to be able to influence Tuscany just sort of destroying the Austrian position in the region we now have an additional national focus that doesn't actually help us since we aren't really able to use it. Although it is fairly important that we manage to get to nationalism and imperialism for that manifest destiny. I'll just double check. Machine gun armament is really the big thing we're going to need. We'll go ahead and focus on state capitalism, which is the best capitalism. So we need colonial negotiations, we already have one of the things, and we need state and government. So let's take a quick look. We could just not research anything for a year, and then we will burst through and get empiric empiricism very quickly. So we may do that. Uh, taking a quick look. It was state and government. So that's just the next one, mission to civilize. We will hopefully have nationalism and imperialism or just anyone else having it so the quicker we get this the better for us as long as we get it fairly quickly it should be okay though we'll go ahead and give everybody proportional representation so we get a bit more realistic uh, elections 
We'll go ahead and not encourage our people to drink. And just keep upgrading our factories. And we are just blowing through this at full speed right now. As while there is a lot to do, it's more or less stuff that we don't have to worry about very actively. And we are now the seventh ranked great power, which is very nice. We are a little bit further away from that worrying point where a country civilizing or just building up its inf industry would kick us out completely. So that's very nice. We don't have to worry so much about that anymore. We'll go ahead and continue increasing the opinions of the various states around us. And we'll go ahead and just get the various prestige gaining options. So right there, we are in a very nice spot. We'll go ahead and maybe... Well, we don't actually have anything to do right now. We should probably get railroads up and running in the near future. It'll still probably take us a while to do that. Although, it's really not that much of a concern at this point. We'll take a look at the Sphere of Influence map mode. We are doing decently well. Maybe not amazing. All things considered, though, I'd say we're on the right path. Apparently, amiable relations with the Russian Empire. That's, that's nice. Kind of random, but nice. We will be able to create fully one-ish colonial region in Africa, just based on the uh, amount of colonial power we have. It's possible we could just create uh, basically client states in Africa in order to expand our influence. That is a decent option, although ideally I wouldn't want to do that. It, it just sort of while good, it's not ideal. So we're going to save up and keep building these naval bases. Ideally, we'll be able to form Italy in the next 11 years, which would mean, more than anything else, that we would be able to use all of the naval bases throughout Italy. Now, we are still being discredited and just fought, essentially, on every issue by Austria and France. That's really to be expected. We'll go ahead and see how quickly we're able to get empiricism since we've saved up all those research points. It just clicks over at a hundred a day until we run out of saved points. So a good idea might be to just stop researching text about a year or two before uh, 1870 so that we'll have an, a pretty great lead on whatever power turns out. Okay, what was I saying? If, okay, we might get a decent lead to get machine guns in order to get colonial tech before anyone else does. And look at that, we're already just, just still going through all of this. We made around 22 a day. I'm not sure exactly how many we had saved up, although if we're able to just completely get empiricism just right out the gate, that'll be very nice. Oh, unfortunately we were expelled from Luca. I wish I had noticed that a bit quicker we would have been able to influence them. We ran out of saved points, although we've essentially gotten empiricism just like that. So the next focus is going to be state and government. And actually we'll go ahead and check navy. We don't have to worry until... Well, we just don't have to worry for the navy yet. We'll go ahead and get state and government so that we'll get mission to civilize. It'll just give us a 10% chance, although that's really enough. Now we still don't have 2 million Italian males. We only have 774,000. If we just get up to a little over a million, we'll be able to get another national focus. And it really seems like the only way we can expect to do that is going to be by forming Italy. And once again, probably not the most realistic thing, but still a decent goal. Now, what we still need to do is expand our naval bases just throughout the Empire. And since this is really the max level of naval base we can get before uh, all of the basically scramble for Africa takes place, 
we're really going to just do this and then we'll be really set. All we'll need to do is build up our navy in the uh, two or three years before. And unfortunately, it's looking like we're back at 8th. We're now at 7th again, so never mind. We're having a bit of issue spreading our influence throughout Italy. We will need to get that diplomatic tech right after state and government. And once our naval base is all finished, one was just about to finish, finish and it was probably in Zanzibar. So we'll get all of these up. That'll give us a very high uh, naval force limit. And we'll just build the most advanced ships that we have at the very end of the 1860s. From there, we'll have a fairly decent uh, capability to go ahead and colonize. And with that all said and done, we'll be in a really nice spot. We are accidentally building that fort in Lamu. That's probably for the best though. It is a key naval base and it is rather far from the actual center of our polity. So we'll just let that happen. There's really nothing we can do to stop it. We'll just not be upset. And since we are actually getting unemployed, we'll go ahead and shift our focus back up north to Lazio, where unfortunately, since liberals are in charge, we can't encourage the production of any sort of factory. We could seize the means of production, which doesn't really do anything since I don't believe anyone actually built anything in our country. Forming Italy is still going to be quite a distant goal, especially now that we're actually fighting the Austrians diplomatically. And it looks as though we actually have no ability to influence anyone else just due to their actions. We could go ahead and get market regulations or start working down the path. As long as we get to iron steamers, we will have essentially all of the naval capacity anyone else will have by 1870 and we do have to worry about getting those discoveries the discoveries are what actually allow for the different uh, ship types to be built we'll go ahead and just change the voting methods a little bit more we were discredited which is actually fairly nice it just slows down the rate that we manage to influence them and you see that that doesn't really matter as we're already almost at 50. We'll go ahead and move them up to full, full focus. And let's see if we're able to do this. Increase. They're now friendly with us. We've just got mission to civilize. I probably shouldn't have immediately clicked that away. That means if we go over to our colony, the only thing we need now is colonial negotiations. And that will come in time. Colonial map mode, there's still nowhere we can colonize right at this moment. So in nine years, we'll be able to start focusing on that. We really do need to get our steamers and then eventually iron steamers. If we're able to get ironclads and monitors, then we will be able to just build as many of them as possible. And once we have just a large navy of those various ship types, then we will be able to start colonizing in earnest as soon as, really, as soon as 1870 rolls around. And we do need to just save up a bit of money in order to expand our naval bases. Really, it's not too concerning, as we have already built up our naval bases pretty much everywhere in the Empire. And realistically, the biggest issue we're going to have is we won't really be able to afford to maintain as much of a naval presence as we'll have the ability to maintain. So we're probably going to end up going into debt supporting our navy. We do already get commerce raiders, so that is very nice. And as soon as we get iron steamers, we'll be able to switch our focus drastically over to market regulations and just keep getting that diplomatic influence. Now, once that's done, I'll go ahead and double check. Once that's done, we will be in a fairly good spot. We'll go switch over to industry and get railroads and other such things. Oh, it looks as though we finally did manage to get, I guess 800,000 was the switching point. Maybe it was due to our two million overall population Whatever the case, we can now go ahead and build another, or uh, 
put another national focus. And we'll go ahead and support our poor capitalists and build a luxury clothes plant. I don't really know if that's actually going to succeed in the long run. But hey, it's an additional factory and we are having a bit of an issue keeping these factories growing at the rate that our population is. Also, it will be good in the long run to get our capitalists invested in the state. Let's take a look over here at Sardinia Piedmont. We're able to get them up to friendly. And all right, we focus them 100%. We'll also start focusing the other areas fairly well. Unfortunately, we're just continually getting banned from various places. The French are at 60 influence, so they may ban us again at 65. That is really the most likely occurrence. Yeah, we just got banned. Alright, so we do have to worry quite a bit about actually being able to influence all of these countries. Uh, there are things such as Brothers Wars, such as what the German Empire would occasionally do against Austria, although we haven't really gotten any notifications of that sort of thing. We can go ahead and change our message settings, as we haven't actually gotten any warnings about war. When a nation declares war on another nation. Oh wait, when we declare. Yeah, we'll go ahead and get that as a pop-up, as that's probably very important. Although we haven't been called to war by the French. Oh yeah, in fact, actually look at that. There is a war. This war is happening right now. There's actually a very major war happening right now. And the French will not ally us. We might be able to ally, say, the Russians? They don't seem to have any allies. They will accept. All right, nice. So, all right, that is very interesting, in fact. We almost missed that. So, yeah, the Franco-Prussian War is occurring, and it's not going very well for the Prussians, which is decently good news. If the French just get devastated, that's good news for us in the sense that, oh, well, that's not happening at all. It looks as though... Looks as though the North Germans are actually doing fairly poorly. In fact, very, very poorly. This is not great news for us. In fact, yeah, so the French actually managed to press into the Rhineland. Okay, well that's very interesting and not at all good. The, uh, the big concern with that is... Now we're going to have to deal with a very powerful France and a ascendant Austria, which means both of those countries are going to work rather hard to keep in, to keep Italy down. They already did well against the North Germans, who really are a natural ally of ours against France and Austria. We don't really have the army or the capac or the uh, capacity to build an army powerful enough to really turn things in our favor. We'll go ahead and build, I believe we're looking to build an artillery, a hussar, and an infantry. That's just a full group. A, uh, a minor interesting point is that it's always good to build your infantry out of minority pop groups as they take the most casualties in a war. And that way you won't have to worry about your um, accepted culture pops actually dying in wars. All of your uh, non-accepted groups can go and, you know, fight for their country first. Is it a little brutal? Kinda, yeah, but it, it is an effective strategy. We'll go ahead and take a quick look at all of these areas. Conservatives won the election, which is very interesting. Now we could go ahead and get a cast a spell against Denmark, that really doesn't help us at all, so we'll just avoid it for now. And our infamy has managed to burn pretty well. We'll go ahead and build this last naval base that we need to. And yeah, our naval bases are all coming along and basically just building up together as well as anyone could expect them to. Our army will be in a more or less decent position. We don't have to worry about 
uh, two Sicilies attacking us as they're in our sphere. The Russians will hopefully provide enough of a deterrence that we won't get attacked by Austria or anyone else. And sadly, it looks as though everywhere in Europe, San Spain is in someone's sphere of influence, which means it's just going to be a bit of a difficult fight to drag, kicking and screaming, various countries out of their spheres. We go ahead and upgrade our factory. Sadly, another pandemic. I believe we can deal with that by just moving our our various industry things for chemistry and electricity. Although it doesn't matter so much at this point. We're also the fourth most prestigious country in the world, which is very nice. Below France, the UK, and I'm going to go ahead and assume the US, yes, which is the most prestigious country in the world right now. Although really, that's very nice for such a uh, such a small country. Morocco broke their alliance with us, which is odd. I'm not quite sure what would convince them to do that or not do that. And we'll go ahead and build a navy. We'll just build a monitor right now and just see what that costs us and what that's good for. We'll go ahead and take a look at our naval map or at our naval production mode. And it looks as though the only thing I dislike is that it's hard to see how much influence various things have on uh, really colonies. We have market regulations now, which is great. We have uh, mission to civilize. We should probably get functionalism in the future. We'll get railroads first just to help our industry a bit. Not that it really needs help. Our industry is doing great. Although it's always nice to just get a bit more. And it looks like our capitalists are actually starting to take the lead on some factories. We'll go ahead and get this experimental railroad just to help their various industries. From there, though, a really important thing. Let's take a look and just double check everything. Functionalism will probably be the main one. We'll need that. We are making enough money that we don't really have to worry about things like steam turbines at this very moment. That will help us a lot later on once we start to actively colonize. Now it looks as though there is a bit of an issue with red shirts starting to take over various areas in Italy. I'm not sure if we should actively fight them though. We do not have the ability to build railroads. So we'll go ahead and research steam turbines right now. Well, no, 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 no. We'll get functionalism right now to increase our literacy. That will be done in just a year, so we will still have time. Uh, with around a year and a half to two years left, we're going to stop researching technologies. That way we will have a significant lead. Oh, and it looks as though we are finally getting our first crisis for the Ottoman Aegean Islands. Greece wants us to back them up. Let's go ahead and take a look at diplomacy, crises, the Ottoman Empire obviously defending themselves. We're going to go ahead and not put our necks out for this one. And unfortunately, no one else did either. We're going to pause the game now that we can influence Parma and just increase their opinion of us. They are now friendly. As we go forward, we may very well We'll go ahead and just make them full priority. And we were banned, all right. Okay, Modenia then is going to be the next thing. We can build ironclads. So right now we're at 131 colonial power. We have a monitor being built right now. We'll also build an ironclad. And we'll see, they both cost the same amount of resources, probably a different amount of actual cost. We will see which of them increases our colonial power the most. And whichever does, we'll just build our navy full of them in the next few years. We do have a very high naval force limit, so we can just do that. Oh, Modenia, we can finally remove from the sphere of the Austrians. 
and we are slowly, slowly whittling down the Austrian presence. It'll take a while, and it's going to be a bit of a slog. However, that's one of four. That's 25%. We're 25% of the way there for removing Austria. We'll still have to worry about the French in a bit, and unfortunately this factory is just not doing anything good. We could make a... We could go ahead and try to build a crisis in Lombardia and stop just increasing the size of our industry since this factory isn't really doing anything good for us anyway. We'll remove it. And let's see, can we actually do that? Apparently it is not. We just cannot do that. We cannot encourage that flashpoint. We'll just go back to supporting our craftsmen. All right, and that's done. That gave us 10 colonial power. We'll go ahead and see how much our ironclad gives us in the next 200 days. We are really running out of time for this sort of thing. So we may as well just go ahead and build. Let's see. We'll just build monitors throughout Africa as we can build them there anyway. And we'll just start building additional ironclads. We really don't have that much time to dither. So the more ships we build, the quicker by far will be the better. In fact, we could even build things. Let's go ahead and see. Let's just let our poor people be upset. It's a bit more of an issue if they're upset than our rich. However, we'll just let that happen for now. We'll build another one of our basic colonial armies. When we actually do have the force limits to be a major power, we're going to have to start reconsidering our colonial ventures, or our army makeup. And our colonial ventures will really help. We've managed to get Modenia into our sphere of influence. We'll lower our focus on them to maybe like second level. Now let's see, we can also get biologism. We'll go ahead and do that. Unfortunately, it doesn't look as though our capitalists actually cared enough to increase our factory size, or not our factory, our railroads. So we'll go ahead and upgrade our railroads ourselves. And an important thing we can do is we'll start building railroads throughout just all of Italy. And an important thing this will do is give us investment in these countries. And the more investment we put into these countries, the greater our influence will be. We'll go ahead and just expand our railroads throughout the empire. And that cost us a lot of money, although it's fairly worth it. All right. Now that cost us a decent amount of cash, and now it's kind of just hogging our little tooltip menu thing. Let's go ahead and just get rid of them and all right it is a bit crowded now that's all right not too much of a concern we'll get an ironclad done in 60 days and we'll see how much colonial power that gives us really the only concern is if it gives us less colonial power than a monitor we'll have to switch focus to monitors in our other provinces and in fact just considering how long it takes to build these things and how difficult of a time we're having getting the resources we probably should have started this off a bit earlier. That's uh, completely my mistake. Ultimately, that'll probably slow down our colonial ventures somewhat. We'll be able to get two colonies with the current rate. We'll try to establish one in Somaliland, which will cut people off from this area, and also probably down here in Lindy. As long as we're able to just carve our way towards the sea from there, and also Tunis up here. Alright, and that gave us 12. So ironclads are definitely the way to go everywhere we're able to build them. We'll just double up on that. And in Africa, monitors will be the name of the game. So we'll just triple up on that. Now with that all said and done, let's take a look. All of these areas are building. We'll look way over here. I don't believe this one's actually fully done yet, so we will also be able to build in Malaya. Foul murder. We'll just not throw allegations wildly about. 
At any rate, with that all said and done, we are in a very nice spot for the new era. Once this research is completed, we will probably need to go ahead and get something like tax efficiency or, well, really anything. We are fairly open. We definitely have enough money that we'll be able to just keep building the naval units we need. We're out of canned food, though, which is a bit of a problem. And it looks as though that's actually the major limiting factor right now for our industry, or for our navy. So what's possibly a good idea, we'll go ahead and just... We'll just switch to reactionary really quick. Luckily for us, that makes it so that our people actually care about their government. We won't actually do anything right now. Actually, we will switch to gerrymandering. And a very important step, we'll also build a, let's see if we can find it, canned food factory. Why can't we build this? Because we already have one being built. Well, that's actually really convenient. We didn't need to do that just now. Uh, what other things do we need? We need artillery and steamer convoys. Well, let's take a look. We may as well domestically produce as much as we can for our navy. Steamer shipyard, fairly decent thing. Costs a lot of things we don't actually have, though. Artillery is the same way. We'll probably not be self-sufficient. That is maybe a bit of a pipe dream. At any rate, with that canned food factory well on its way, hopefully we'll be able to uh, just focus heavily on getting people into it. Our wine factory was doing rather poorly for a few days there, which is a bit worrying. Probably in part due to all the high tariffs. Luckily, everything is subsidized, so it doesn't really matter. And we'll go ahead and get everyone very focused on getting into this canned food factory. I might even just just shut down this factory for a moment to get everyone over and we'll just reopen it now with without all of its people working there and all of a sudden we are getting enough canned foods that's very nice and we've completed that technology we're probably going to end this episode right about now we'll just go ahead and get steam turbines to keep our production where it's at and there we go we probably could have done that a little bit better if we were building these ships a tiny bit earlier. We'd probably have more colonial power when it really counted. That is a bit of a sad oversight on my part. Ultimately, though, I'm not too, too saddened by it. We'll also, before we end this, build, I guess, a frigate. And we'll see if the frigate gives us any colonial power, as we're really going to need to get all the colonial power we can, and that may in fact include building frigates in every single province, as by the looks of it we'll be able to get maybe three or four monitors and ironclads out of each province before 17 or 1870, and that's really not enough. For our goals, we're going to want to get every ship in every province possible built as quickly as is really possible at all. This won't be done until October. So yeah, thank you very much for watching. Next time, we will hopefully get our colonial empire set up. And from there, maybe turn our gaze back into Europe and Italy. Where, hopefully, there will be a country with that name and not just a geographical concept. Thank you very much for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe, and I hope you have a great day.